Hi, my name is Ian Khan, and you're listening to the Innovation Times Podcast. I am a technology author, speaker, and an advocate for everything good that technology brings. A part of my work is running the Innovation Times Podcast and bringing together people from various aspects of the industry and talk about how technology is affecting the way that they perform their jobs, their functions, and how they're leading their organizations to change that's propelled by technology. As part of my podcast, I interview people from all segments of the industry and different verticals as well. Welcome to Innovation Times. Hi, this is Ian Khan from ASA 2017. I have with me Sarah Sladek, who's the author of Talent Generation. Uh, Sarah is the author of many different books, but this is her latest book. Sarah, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ian. I heard your session yesterday and, and the message about different generations coming together and how we need to work together, uh, not just to, you know, to drive revenues, but to really create that engagement. Tell us about it. Right. So this latest book is the result of several years of research and really this widening gap that we're seeing in the workforce as well as in membership associations, this engagement gap, meaning that younger generations aren't engaging in organizations the same way as older generations. And I really wanted to identify why that's happening and, um, and also the fact that we have seen this emerge into somewhat of a crisis. So the fact that we can't engage younger people means that we have declining productivity, declining job satisfaction, and a loss of uh, talent and revenues. We're seeing increasing turnover among younger generations. So we have to be able to resolve it. So the book is the result of really looking at what are the most successful organizations doing to engage young talent and um, what are their secrets, yeah. basically. How do, you, how do you see this really translating in within the associations world? Like, the, the world of associations is full of people. There's people everywhere because that's what primarily associations do. They bring people together uh, so that they can create value in a certain way within a certain theme. Uh, have you seen specific challenges within the associations industry? And I'll ask you a question later as to how can we tackle that challenge uh, using some ideas. What do you see happening in industry right now? Right. So we absolutely see this being a huge problem for associations. So nationally, the average is we're seeing about 62% of associations seeing some sort of membership decline or flat membership. It's not growing at all. And, um, and this has kind of been the trend for a while. Uh, membership decline first became notable in 1994, and we haven't really resolved it yet. It just keeps getting worse. Now, the reason why I think it's so important for associations to take a role in workforce development is not only looking at membership engagement decline, but realizing that the industries that they represent their member companies are seeing employment decline and turnover mm -hmm. and loss of productivity. And associations are unique because they represent entire industries and have all these connections to various companies. They have connections to government mm -hmm. and they have the power to influence education. Yeah. So in my opinion, associations are the best suited to take a leadership role in solving the workforce crisis. Now, there's so many facets to creating engagement and, you know, making a, let's say one of the areas could be making uh, associations develop the culture where people tend to stick more. Now we'll, we're getting into that entire generational thing and I don't want to mention the cursed word, the millennials and the millennials are changing the, wor the world, but, but they're, they're one of the generations that are part of this entire ecosystem of different employees within an organization. Uh, I think millennials will fast be outdated in the next few years or the next couple of decades and you now have the post-millennial uh, generation who um, experts predict will have uh, an attention span of 2.3 seconds if I remember right but that's the challenge uh, without going too far out uh, to the to the post-millennial generation what can associations do right now to create engagement and how important is technology to do that what are some of the ways we can create that engagement 
to address these challenges. So we have moved from the industrial era into the post-industrial era, and really, um, you mentioned millennials. Well, millennials are really the personification of change. Um, the, and, and much of that change has been um, evolved, it's evolved because of technology and our access to technology. So technology plays a key role in being able to build relationships, provide products and services, deliver benefits. It, it plays a key role in how younger generations perceive value in associations. And so um, there's the tech piece that associations need to prioritize, realizing that it's not going away. But there's also this idea that in the industrial era, processes and hierarchies and certain traditions and methodologies and linear thinking really prospered. It was all about longevity and years of experience. But now younger people are saying, we want to be part of associations that are nimble and forward thinking and um, you know, practicing globalization and flexibility and um, you know, really incorporating all of the elements of this new era mm -hmm. that has been fueled by technology, but it's also being fueled by ideas and by innovation. And so when they look at some of these more traditional approaches to yeah. how to run an organization, they don't really understand it, they don't feel like they belong, and they disengage. I, uh, that's really great insight. I, I always talk about the fact that in, in the world of tomorrow, uh, technology will definitely play a huge part in and help us bring people together and, and be more productive and be more efficient. But the currency of tomorrow will be the ideas that people generate because that is slowly fading out. And there's two, 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 two different aspects to this. One is that yes, the world is becoming a, a smaller place because we can communicate faster, we can be on FaceTime and do all of those things, but then we're also isolating ourselves by sticking into our cell phones and putting our head down and, and spending hours and hours there. How, how do you see this as, um, I would say, a challenge? And you mentioned the word, the industrial, uh, the industrial era, and I'll ask you a question about that in a second. But how do you see this, this challenge with technology? On one hand, it's, it's making the world a smaller place, we can have more impact, but then we're all putting our heads down and isolating ourselves. What do you, what do you see happening? What should we do uh, to battle that challenge? So I think I, I think it's multifaceted. I think one one thing to keep in mind is that we're just we've just experienced the most disruptive decade in history, and so technology is a piece of that. But we're also seeing tremendous change economically, politically. And we especially see with younger generations, technology is their go-to for finding information and connectivity and, and resources. But it's also their go-to for escapism. Mm -hmm. um, so finding entertainment and um, shutting off the world and some of the negativity in the world. So yes, technology has become a huge component of how, how we operate. Um, but it's, it's, you know, and it has those pros and cons, right? Um, and I think organizations have to recognize that technology is not just a tool anymore, but rather um, it's, it's a way of life. And uh, it's something we can't reverse. And it's merely accelerating. We're now moving into the, this, you know, the cyber age when we think about robotics and artificial intelligence. And, and you know, one thing I often say is that all of this change and disruption, it's either going to be a great challenge for your organization or a great opportunity. It really depends on how you choose to approach it. Right. Uh, I know we don't have a lot of time with you, but in, in your book, uh, you talk a lot about this generational gap, the generational divide. How can we work uh, work with the, with this? Now, in your work with associations, have you seen a trend that that needs to be addressed? Uh, what's happening within associations, and how can association leaders, whether it's the CEOs, the CIOs, uh, and please tell us who's the most relevant person to to act on this advice? Because many associations are very small; they are a one person or two people organizations. They don't have the ability to to scale and and employ fifty different leaders to do all those initiatives. Who should take the reins on creating this engagement, and how should they roll this out when it comes to? Uh, putting it within the within the association. Right. 
So when change happens at an incredibly fast speed, which is what we've been experiencing lately, we find that there are usually two types of leaders. <laughs> there are leaders that kind of stick their head in the sand and they say, um, I don't want to think about it. And they kind of deny that change is even happening and they panic and they become paralyzed by fear. But then there are those leaders that say, um, I, this is exciting and I'm going to embrace it. And it's those second leaders, those change makers, mm -hmm. that we really need in leadership right now. And that means um, engaging other like-minded individuals who are willing to say, I'm okay with taking risks, I'm okay with leaving the status quo, yep. I'm okay with um, navigating an uncertain future and I'm actually kind of excited about it. And the fact is, uh, many of our organizations that hasn't been the case, leadership has been a result of experience, it's been a result of, um, well I worked here for 20 years so I got promoted to CEO. Yeah, yeah. That's not the type of leadership we need. We don't need managers, we need visionary leaders to lead us forward. So the time from, uh, the, so I would say I, I, what I'm concluding is the, the era of uh, the hierarchical uh, management uh, is, is slowly fading away in, in many, many areas. And it's the time for more collaboration or more working hands in hands. I, you know, it's, it's, it's that whole fact that, uh, you know, leaders today have got to roll up their sleeves, get their, get their hands dirty. And when you're talking about smaller associations and, and the average association, I think in order for them to have the scale to create that impact they want, everybody needs to pitch in ideas and take action toward those ideas which will which will really change things. Absolutely. For the first time in history, every generation has something to learn and something to teach. So it's especially influential when an experienced leader can work alongside yeah. a new entry-level leader. Now, uh, interestingly, you mentioned every generation has something to teach. How do you see the newer generations with with trying and wanting to learn more from the older generations? Because I think the older generations, the, the X's and the Y's, are a little bit frustrated in every circle, not just the associations world. They're a little bit frustrated that the, the millennials don't understand, the millennials don't listen. Is that a fact? Mm -hmm. Is, uh, no, I don't think that's true. I think it's simply their approach is different. And I think, um, you know, I often hear associations make the mistake of saying, well, we appointed one young person to our board of directors. Well, imagine being that one young person. The first time you speak up, everybody else is kind of uh, dismissing your ideas or we've already done it that way or that's ridiculous. They don't speak up again. So that's why I say it has to be a collaborative effort. It has to be a community. Um, Irregardless of age or years of experience, but rather your passion for and, and your drive to to move the association forward and your creativity and your innovation. That's what's going to um, really help organizations survive and thrive in this new normal. Excellent. And where can our viewers and listeners get more information about your book, about your work, and uh, and, right. and get some get inspired? Right. You can certainly uh, purchase the book through ASAE and um, check out our company. We are a management consulting firm that specializes in this area at xyzu.org. xyzu.org. Thank you so yes. much, Sarah. So Thank we have you. some really cool insights about how to manage uh, the, the people side of your association, how to get different generations to work uh, with each other. And uh, please check out Sarah's book and her website. And uh, I guarantee you, you'll learn a lot more uh, by reading some of our recent work. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's been Thank a pleasure. You, Ian. Thank you. Loved it. Excellent. If you're confused about the current state of technology and the impact that it has on the world, then you are at the right place. My name is Ian Khan. I'm an author and a technology speaker who focuses on the value created in the current world. I talk about ideas, thoughts, and value creation in general that helps us propel ourselves into a future that's driven by technology. The Internet of Things, blockchain, artificial intelligence, cloud are all means to create value. Technology in general is an enabler for positive business outcomes. If you're confused about the outcomes that technology can create for you, then you're at the right place. 
For more information, you can always visit me on my website at www.iancon.com or follow me on social media on Twitter at IanConLive. Let's change the future by creating a value, nothing else. Let's just change the future by creating more value. That's what I stand for, and that's my message. Just when you